Well, today I've got this nice little 42 inch Panasonic TV, TH42PX75. Also, I've got a TH42PX80U, and they're both suffering from the same problem short on the power supply board and blown fuses. Anyhow, on this one, the uh, power factor control FET transistor, FET field effect transistor, is shorted right here. AC input fuses are both blown, so that's a good sign that this circuit is defective. I've had these problems before. The only thing I've ever had wrong are the power factor correction FETs as well as the diodes that rectify the pulse from the FET. So it should be a very simple repair, replacing the FET and replacing the diodes and the fuse. So let's start. Okay, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I've got my voltmeter here, and I'm just going to check between the source and the drain of the FET. And it's a dead short. I'm on the diode scale. I'm going to check these three diodes. They're in parallel, so you can just check one. They do check good. I'm going to change them anyhow, uh, just to make sure. They're in parallel, which means that the cathodes are all connected. Cathode is the side with the band and the anodes are all connected together, so if I check cathode to cathode, it's going to be a dead short. So I'm going to start by removing the FET from the circuit. Now, it does require some unsoldering, kind of hard to see down in here, but it is soldered. And they use rivets in these to secure uh, the FET, so they'll have uh, better current handling capability without breaking loose. So let's go ahead and take that FET out of the circuit. Now it's a tight squeeze, but you can get in here and manage to loosen the screw. And then uh, I like to use this little skinny standard screwdriver to reach in here and actually take the one mounting screw out. Make sure you save the insulator because you'll reuse that again. And if you wanted to unsolder this fat without fancy tools, you could do it just one lead at a time. Um, just heat it up and kind of wiggle each lead as you walk it out of the circuit board. So start by just making sure that it's broke free, that you can actually move the transistor so it's not mounted to the heat sink anymore. And I'm just going to start by adding some fresh solder to all three of these leads. And I'm just going to try to do it as if you were doing this at home. Going to rock it back and forth, alternately heating up the leads. If you can get all three leads molten at the same time, you can just take it out of the circuit just that easy. Now, this one that's in there is an RJK5020. It's the original number on it. I'm going to replace it with a higher current capability. And now, as far as cleaning out the holes, if you have solder wick, you can just solder wick, it vacuums up the solder, wicks it into it. Or you can use a pick, dental pick, or something like that. Or you could even use a small drill bit to drill out the hole if you needed to. I'm going to use a solder sucker, like in my other videos, just because I happen to have one. And I'm going to do the same thing with these three diodes here. I'm going to go ahead and replace those three diodes. And I'm using MUR460 diodes to replace these with. Um, these you can do the same thing. Grab them with a pair of pliers. They're down on the board. Heat up one end, just pull them out, and then clean out the holes. So here's some of the schematic on this set. This is the power factor control FET right here, RJK5020 that we talked about that we just removed from the circuit. And so what we want to do is check this resistor right here. It says it's a 4.7 ohm resistor, R406, as well as check this transistor, 2SB1443, this diode right here, 1NS4, it's a D415, and um, these resistors, 10K resistors, they should be okay. They can take quite a bit of voltage, but 
sometimes when these fetch short, the voltage that's on the source may be transferred back to the gate and it may follow its way back down the line and do some damage. These 12 ohm resistors probably, and then here's the three diodes up here, as you can see they're all in series, or in parallel, I'm sorry, as well as um, down here where the gate drive is. Um, it's probably okay. I've never had a problem with one of these. Uh, the biggest problem I've ever had with these circuits is just the FET itself. So um, you can take a look at that schematic if you need to. Hopefully uh, you can read it there. But nevertheless, here we go. We've got the three diodes out. Let's go ahead and just with the ohm meter. Let me see if I can get it close so you can see it with the camera. Okay, so I've got the meter just on the ohm range. Now I'm going to check that resistor R406. It's perfectly fine, 4.8 ohms. That pretty much means everything else is going to be okay, but just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and find that transistor Q404. I'm going to put this back on the diode range. And I just want to look for some diode drops. That one looks just fine. Uh, it appears to be just fine. There's the drop of that one diode. And that is D415. And then let me find the two resistors, R439 and R493. There's R439 put it back in the ohm range. So these should read 12 ohms each. 11.9, 12.2. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the uh, control IC is okay. Uh, the switching transistor that switches the FET on and off is okay. So it looks like I'm just gonna be replacing the FET as well as the diodes. And that should get the set up and going. I'm gonna do a quick ESR check on the main filter capacitor. Okay, so I've got my ESR meter here. Let me make sure I set it to zero. Go ahead and just put the probes across the filter cap and it should read right at zero. It's a large enough value capacitor and that one tests good. So let's go ahead and get some new parts in here. I thought I'd show you real quick. Let's put this back on the diode range and we'll check this FET. It shorted in all directions just in case there could be another underlying issue on the board, just make sure that there are no shorts. Nope, everything looks great. So here's the uh, FET that I've chosen, the MOSFET, to replace this. MOSFET just stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. You just call it MOSFET for short. Uh, 60 amp. The original one, I believe, was a 20 amp 500 volt RJK5020. The new one is a 60 amp 500 volt, so much higher current capability. As well as here are the diodes that I've chosen to use the MUR460s. They're 4 amps each, 600 volts, peak reverse voltage. They've proven to be quite reliable in the circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in the, uh, in the board and we'll see how we go. All right, so I'm going to start by applying just a very small droplet of heat sink compound to the back of the transistor. Uh, these don't generate a tremendous amount of heat, but I just I want to make sure that it is sunk correctly and we don't have any problems with it. Now I have it laying on this aluminum heat sink as part of the TV. I'm just going to try to pull the board up here, move the camera a little bit so you can see down in here. I've kept all three leads in my finger so they're shorted out. And I'm holding on to the tab and I'm touching the heat sink because these are static sensitive. You can do some damage if you just hold this thing in your hand and then go and try to insert it into the circuit board without being properly grounded. Okay, so there I've got it into the board. So I thought I'd just show you when you have it properly tightened, you'll see just a little bit of the heat sink compound squeeze out around the back of the transistor. Go ahead and install the diodes. They're not static sensitive. 
so you really have nothing to worry about damaging them. Just pay particular attention to the band end is the cathode end. Next we'll go ahead and solder the FET into place. I usually always start by soldering the gate and the source first. I'm sorry, the drain and the source first. And then the gate last. Solder in the three diodes. There we go. Trim all the leads. Clean the flux off the board. This is just acetone. I'm not using any special chemicals or anything. It's all nice and clean and ready for a test. Okay, so I've got my setup and ready to go. Uh, everything uh, below and to the right of this big white line is hot ground on this side. This is cold ground. So I've got my negative probe on the hot ground heat sink. I've got my positive on the cathode of the rectifier diodes. Got my meter set here on the 600 volt range. So I'm just going to plug it in and we should see that go up to about 400 volts. I saw 385, so that's good. Let me hit the power button on the front. There we go, 397 volts. That's just what I should be seeing here. Let's go around to the front. We've got the setup and running now. Just wanted to show you that the part number on this power supply board is a a TNPA4221 AK, if you see the AK up here. And the original Panasonic part number is TXN slash P1XGTUS. Tom X Ray Nancy slash Paul 1 X Ray George Tom Union Sam is the part number. It also appears to be compatible to the Tom X-Ray Nancy slash Paul 1 Henry Nancy Tom Union Sam. The TXN slash P1 HNTUS uh, appears to be a substitute that you may have in your set. And this power supply happens to be an LSEP1260 AN LSEP 1260 AN They say that it's the same as an LSEP 1260 UNHB That's Lincoln Sam Echo Paul 1260 Union Nancy Henry Boy uh, Both the power supplies appear to be very very similar in design and they both have the same exact failure 
All right, so here's our second board. Got the new parts in it, ready to go. Let's fire it up. Looks good so far. We're up and running. Voltages look just identical to the first one. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is some of these power supply boards uh, only have two of these diodes instead of three. They have a space for three. I always replace with three. And I have found those diodes in, the, in some cases to be physically broken in half, which means one diode was doing all the work. And I have found the diodes to be shorted. So that's why I always replace the diodes with the FET transistor. So let's take a look around to the front of this one. You can see it's up and running as well. And there we've got both our TVs going. Can uh, definitely keep a couple more sets out of the trash heap or the recycle bin as the case may be. I appreciate all your views, comments, and questions. I have a Twitter account now, NorCal715. Although I don't know why you'd want to follow somebody. I hardly tweet about anything. But um, just in case, you can follow me at NorCal715 on Twitter. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.